This week's My American Dream segment is brought to you in part by Communities and Schools of Mid-America, doing whatever it takes to help students stay in school and be successful. The following program is brought to you by TZ Productions, celebrating KPTS's nearly 50 years of community support in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. Brought to you by Central Security Group, your experts in home automation, security, and peace of mind. View video on your smartphone and control your home's lights, locks, heating, cooling, and more. Security app compatible with Apple Watch and Amazon Echo. Program support provided by the F. Price Kosman Memorial Trust and Trust Bank Trustee, bringing you the Kansas Wild Edge segments on Positively Kansas. It's time for Positively Kansas. Coming up, lives are being changed one lesson at a time. Discover how this effort to teach English to immigrants has really taken off in Wichita. Also, Kansas Wesleyan, one of the founding members of eSports, is a powerhouse to be reckoned with. They're paying for college by playing video games, and their success has landed their small Kansas University on the national stage. You'll meet this new generation of collegiate athlete. Plus, it makes me happy. It explodes my heart. These Andover fifth graders are connecting with kids across the country and around the globe. Find out how it's changing their lives and it's what happens in the barbershop stays in the barbershop. The old fashioned barbershop is making a comeback and it's young guys who are behind it. They're relishing this opportunity to groom and gab, just like Andy and the gang used to do in Mayberry. I'm Sierra Scott. Those stories and more are coming your way. Positively Kansas starts right now. More and more people are getting behind a Wichita-based program aimed at helping immigrants learn English. And Positively Kansas is part of the reason why. During our first season, we showed you how this volunteer effort is changing lives and attitudes. Now, see how the Wichita community is rallying to make this ESL program, which stands for English as a Second Language, as a win-win for the entire community. Anthony Powell has the story. A so everybody can hear you spell it, say it out loud. It's all about teamwork at Wichita's Evergreen Park and Rec Center as volunteer teachers and hardworking students eager to learn English come together to make that goal a reality. This English as a Second Language program began back in 2010 under the leadership of Pastor Tim Jepson and his wife Jennifer with help from their church, Pleasant Valley United Methodist. Since then, it's estimated 4,000 people have attended the program, which also helps students study for their citizenship test. Students like Luis Yanez, who says before coming here, he shied away from conversations in English. I'm so happy when I can communicate another person because sometimes the, the people think to themselves, oh, I say hello, but he don't say nothing. The program's founders and supporters also believe it has helped the Wichita economy because they say when people learn English, they have access to higher paying jobs. With so many pluses, it's easy to see how word is spread. Marty Corneo, who along with his brothers and dad, ran Corneo and Sons Construction for many years, heard about the program through City Council member Janet Miller. He tries to visit regularly to inspire students. Corneo says he will never forget his first visit back in 2017. And more than anything, when I came here and I saw the families, the moms, the dads and their children in here, taking their time after working hours to want to learn uh, English, it just blew me away. Corneo and his brother Ron, who also visits the program, say it really hits home. Their father immigrated from Mexico to Wichita with nothing and spoke no English when he started the construction company. 
The brothers say they could visualize their dad when they came to the ESL program and knew instantly they wanted to support it. They were asking us for, you know, a few thousand dollars to get it going. And we came here that night. Uh, we walked away and says, look, let's, let's get this thing kick-started. And since they've had some matching gifts, and uh, I'd, I'd like to think we can keep this program going. And I will tell you, anybody that comes and sees what's going on, uh, it'll hit them in the heart. The Cornejos ended up donating $20,000. Because I, when I don't speak very well in English, I am sad. Word about the program also spread thanks to KPTS. Back in 2017, it was featured on Positively Kansas. The founders say the story helped with donations, volunteers, and attracting more students. And I think KPTS had a lot to do with that. That video clip was able to be aired in a lot of places. I started a Plum Fund account, and we raised over $9,000 through that. There has also been a $20,000 donation from Wichita's River Lawn Christian Church. Sure, the money is important, but Pastor Tim Jepson says he gets much more joy from seeing the unity the program has inspired. It's about the community coming together, people of like mind and like heart from different denominations, different strata, business people. They're saying, hey, here's some folks that want to learn. They're coming, they're excited to learn, we want to help them. Omar Franco is another example of someone wanting to lend a hand. Growing up in Wichita, he only spoke Spanish, but learned English well enough to become a star student and was hired by Corneo and Sons Construction right out of WSU. Franco tells the students, with the help of the program, they too can achieve. You know, like we say in Spanish, have gotten us, you know, it's just basically, you know, you wanna, wanna do it. Um, it's, you know, it's there, it's an opportunity, you just have to grab it um, and, and run with it. So from donors to volunteer teachers, the city of Wichita continues to show strong support for this English as a Second Language program, a program that is making countless people feel so much more welcome and hopeful about being a Wichita. And in any language, that's a story that's Positively Kansas. For Positively Kansas, I'm Anthony Powell. Pastor Tim Jepson and his wife Jennifer, the co-founders of the program, have done ministries like this in many places across the country, but they say they've never felt so welcome and supported in their efforts as they do in Wichita. Generally speaking, people are people no matter where they live, but sometimes we look different or have different interests and lifestyles depending on our location, and that can create confusion or misunderstanding. Now there's a movement afoot to bridge that gap created by regional differences. Take a look. What are some of your special tradi traditions that you celebrate or attend? Yeah, and how do you celebrate the 4th of July? Because in Kansas, fireworks go off everywhere. And are you urban, suburban, or rural? These are among the many questions that fifth graders at Meadowlark Elementary in Andover have for kids in a school in San Diego, California. They shared class time together and only had to travel along the information superhighway to do it. Uh, the big thing that stuck out in my mind is that uh, uh, their fall is, uh, can be hotter than their summer. It surprised me that they are suburban community and I thought they were an urban community. This video link setup is arranged and paid for by the Kind Foundation, which is the charitable arm of the Kind Snack Food Company. And the mission is just that to help kids be more kind and more empathetic to those who may be culturally different. The organization provides the entire kit and caboodle for free, including the lesson plan to go along with the teleconference. Alicia Moss is among the 16 teachers in Kansas who have jumped at this opportunity. This is a huge um, passion of mine in order to get our kids outside of the four walls that we are in all day. And some of my kids can travel, but some of them can't. And for them to understand that we had a lot of similarities with our San Diego class, but we also had a lot of differences. And that's what makes everybody special. Just the feeling how other people's are, people are feeling, like empathy and putting yourself in other people's shoes, um, I think that it was a really good opportunity for that. The Kansas kids found out that the kids in San Diego all know Spanish and that their school is made up of several buildings, including standalone restrooms. They also discovered that the California students like a lot of the same restaurants from Pizza Hut to Taco Bell. Some of the Andover students say they've visited San Diego, but they learned more about the people who live there 
through this project. And this is only the beginning. Soon this class hopes to have a similar Q&A with students in a different country. Kansas has long been one of the top states for college basketball, thanks to the Shockers, the Jayhawks, and the Wildcats. Well, now there's another powerhouse program that represents a new trend in college athletics. It's happening at a small university in Salina. I'd say it's pretty exciting. Well, a lot of people are saying, yeah, this is cool. Hey, it's becoming a big deal. They're not big and muscular, and they seldom break a sweat, but these guys are some of the winningest athletes at Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina. They make up one of the region's top collegiate esports teams. Candace Wesleyan, one of the founding members of the esports, is a powerhouse to be reckoned with. For those who don't know, this is considered a real sport. The esports team is as much a part of the athletic department as is the football team. I'm gonna hit up chickens and go topside again. There's definitely a lot of athletic qualities to it. I mean, you have to have reaction times, you have to have strategies. Even though it's not as physically demanding as uh, traditional sports, it's at least on the same level mentally-wise, if not more. This became an official varsity sport at KWU in 2015. When I first came here, we had a lot of criticism, both from students as well as the athletic department. And now, I, I couldn't tell you how much support we're getting. Alex Faluzzi is a sophomore from Ocean City, Maryland who came to KWU on an eSports scholarship. He's helped make this one of the top tier eSports teams in the nation. The university gets a lot of exposure. One, because we're one of the only teams that compete at a D1 level. So we're playing against co uh, colleges like Michigan State and Texas A&M. The games are on Saturdays during the winter and early spring. No travel is necessary. From this room in the science building, these computers link up with teams across the country. In this case, they're competing against the University of Northern Iowa. Right now, there are about 50 colleges across the country that have made video gaming a varsity sport. Since KWU started its team, at least three more Kansas colleges have added video games as a varsity sport. They include McPherson, Southwestern, and Pratt Community Colleges. Now to some young men who are embracing the old way of doing things. They're rediscovering the value of old time barbershop where men would stop by for a shave and a haircut and some down home conversation. Jeff Goodman has the story from Derby. Actual blood relative of Wyatt Earp himself, huh? That's what the man said. Well, I, uh, I never gave it much thought, but I, I guess there are some living members of the Earp clan still around, Andy. Yeah, we all be. know Floyd the Barber. Oh, say this is exciting. I mean, depending on who your team is and how, how much you like basketball, it might be worth it to some people. Yeah. Now meet Floyd the Barber 2.0. Jackson Avila is a young man who grew up tired of the trendy hair salons where most men get their hair cut nowadays. This 25-year-old derby man longed for the kind of place he saw on the old TV shows, a place where men gathered for grooming and old-fashioned conversation. Oh, man. Hey, I would have been laughing if I was you. But Avila couldn't find an old-fashioned barbershop geared towards his generation. So he opened one. So what happens in the barbershop stays in the barbershop. Aptly called the Kansas Made Barbershop, a villa opened the shop just last year. He says he plans to make his place the go to barbershop in Derby. First off, by treating each customer who walks in the door as he would a friend. Anybody can walk in off the street and we're going to have a conversation like we've been best friends all all of our lives, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I just, I love the feeling of the barber, of, of a barbershop, and I thought that Derby really needed that. And Avila says his shop also offers several old school barbershop amenities to his customers who take a seat, looking to spend a few yarns and get neatened up a bit. They also offer the younger customers the latest in hairstyle trends. Not a lot of barbershops these days do the straight razor shaves, the hot towel services, um, designs, you know, for a lot of these middle school and high school kids or, or teenagers, they're getting into a lot of designs and stuff like that. Jackson says as a child, his mom, a career cosmetologist, would usually cut the hair in their family. He says as he grew up and became a barber, he knew he had missed out on something important. Hey, my dad got his hair cut by my mom, who was a cosmetologist. I got my hair cut by my mom, who was a cosmetologist, which there's nothing wrong with that. But personally, I think every man and teenager boy, young boy, should have the barbershop experience. 
As for the future, Jackson says he hopes his shop will become a legacy he can pass on to his boys. Come home from work. It was Friday or Saturday. I believe it was a Friday, Friday evening, so I worked fairly late. I came home and uh, on the kitchen table um, was a stuffed animal, was a stuffed teddy bear, and the, the top of its hair was all wet and chopped up. I said, hey, Jackson Jr., what happened with this? He said, oh, I gave him a bald fade. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, that made my day. When you enter the Kansas Made Barber Shop, you can't deny getting the vibe that this isn't an ordinary place to get an ordinary haircut. And neither is the owner's passion for making people look the best they can possibly be. I love making somebody look better. I love making them feel better about themselves. That look that they give, that they have, or that they get when they look at themselves in the mirror, that makes my day. That's why I'm a barber. That's why I do what I do. That's why I enjoy cutting hair so much. Yeah, that's nice. Like that, man. For Positively Kansas, I'm Jeff Goodwin. Wow, makes me wish I could go to a barber shop. Now we begin a new weekly segment on Positively Kansas called Kansas Wild Edge. Each week, videographer Mike Blair will show us something beautiful and fascinating about Kansas wildlife. Take a look. There are hilltops and open spaces where clean wind hasn't touched ground for a hundred miles. Here where stone posts etch the ridges and where wildflowers paint color into verdant grasslands, meadowlarks are nature's criers. The sky? It's an overhead sea where a sailing sun and fleeting clouds play like children to form running shadows. Umbral fingers spread and touch the land like hands of a musician, strumming as it always has, the landscape in an infinite symphony. There, you feel the freshness of a moment that's always waiting, but one you manage somehow to almost never find. In such places, free and simple, the soul reaches out for a place called home. And those places are always waiting for you and me. And now where the gravel lands, Time isn't any big deal Clouds floating by are the only measure Of the pace life ought to feel And now where the gravel ends You can get things all sorted out Just take a deep breath and listen to your heart And remember what life's about There's no better place if you need some Wash away all your sins when you 
talk to the one who could make things right and out where the gravel ends in no time you'll be feeling better and find that you're ready to go back home again from out where the gravel ends I'm Mike Blair for Positively Kansas. Next week, Mike takes us into the world of the state's largest game bird, the wild turkey. Now to another new segment you'll be seeing each week here on the show. It's called My American Dream, and it's all about Kansans who are pursuing their life goals, striving to achieve their best. Here's Macy Johnson with our first American Dreamer, public speaker and author, Larry Thompson. Welcome everyone to My American Dream. I am joined here today with Larry Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what your life was like as a child and some of the, the difficulties that you felt. As a young child, you know, I realized we didn't have very much, mm -hmm. but neither did the rest of the kids in my neighborhood. So I thought that was how life no. was for everyone. A misconception is often that if your kids are not from means or have finances and they struggle. Mm -hmm. But a lot of good homes just don't have the money. Right. I had very nurturing parents that loved me, mm -hmm. took good care of me, encouraged me, supported me doing well in mm -hmm. school. No, I just remember, you know, I slept in a crib till I was five because I didn't have a bed and I thought mm -hmm. it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, my parents didn't talk about money in front of us, so wow. I never really had the stress. I never had to hear the stress of it that I know some kids have to. So mm -hmm. I didn't really know. Right. Um, so you are an established author of two incredible books. Sure. I, I never set out to write a book. What happened for me is I began coaching and teaching in schools. Mm -hmm. And I was always drawn to kids that had a little different struggle than somebody else. So right. I would find them and help them. And, and then I took over a school that was really failing that served kids in the foster care system. Mm -hmm. And just realizing how backwards we had done school discipline and how we weren't reaching the kids by the traditional methods we were using. So I started to explore and do something different and it really began to work. And then out of that, people started asking me to help them mm -hmm. help their schools. And so the next stage was, mm -hmm. I can't get to everybody, but maybe right. if they could read how, right. I could help them that way. So do you feel like you've changed lives? Do you have like a particular story where you you were moved that they were like, wow, I probably one story that will always stick with me is I was working in the prison systems in Ohio mm -hmm. and uh, they just told me this won't work and these kids are different and I just couldn't believe that so I went in that day ready mm -hmm. to take on the fight and uh, a young man got in a lot of trouble and the traditional way was to take him in handcuffs and put him in a cell you know do sure. the and so I said, can I do what I've been trying to show you guys to do today with this kid? Please, just one time, please. <laughs> and I took him into the room. And by the time we were all done, I told him, I, I can't take you back to the class till you have a plan so your brain doesn't respond the same way twice. Mm -hmm. So you have to interrupt that pattern. And you got to come up with something for me. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is I want you to correct it with your teacher because I want your relationship to be back to good so he doesn't kick you out again. Right. And the kid went back, and this is a very tough kid that grew up in those gangs in the streets. Right. And, and I watched him get choked up telling his teacher, I've been disrespecting. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm going to show you I can do if you'll give me an opportunity to try again. Wow. And not only did the teacher tap him on the chest and say, you're welcome back in my room, young man. Aww. It was a very moving moment. Uh -huh. But I went back in May, and that kid won the most outstanding student, most improved student of the year. Wow. I mean, I come from single parent household and they have that statistic where you're six times more likely to drop <laughs> yeah. out of high school. You're not going to become successful. You know, what are some of the things that you feel is the most often overlooked? Well, I feel like we make it a little harder than it needs to be at times because mm -hmm. 
I go back to the skill of self-control or regulating yourself. People like to say, oh, this child's not motivated. Well, really, to me, motivation is just another component of self-control. Self-control mm -hmm. is actually like a muscle. We don't strengthen that muscle. Mm -hmm. We say things like, you're out, mm -hmm. or here's your consequence. But if there's nothing for the child to do to build the muscle, mm -hmm. it changes nothing in the child. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that you had a mentor growing up or, or someone that you looked to that really, really made you connect with them? I think I had a lot of mentors, you know, mm -hmm. as I go back and look at different stages of my life. And, and athletics happened to be something that kind of got me recognized as a young kid. Right. So a lot of it was coaches for me that encouraged and knew the right things to say when mm -hmm. I would want to give up on myself. And, and then, uh, you know, that made me want to teach. And then when I got actually into the schools as an adult mm -hmm. and looked at them from an adult lens, I realized Mm -hmm. how many things weren't working. That's what I think it's all about. It's just being able to identify when something, when it's a bad day or when there's something going on with the student. It's really connecting with them. It's about the relationship that you're building yeah. with them. So where can f people find more information about this book if they want to go pick it up? We have a website, uh, Responsibility Centered Discipline, and the parent mm -hmm. book is linked to that. And it kind of shares where we're speaking and the schools that mm -hmm. we work with and oh. our schedule and okay. those types of things. Okay, so now that we've gotten to this point, what would you define as your American dream? We have to rebuild the way we do school discipline. And that, that's right. my dream is to see that change mm -hmm. and our kids become uh, different levels of success, all kids. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Larry, for joining me on this incredible episode. And we will see you all next week for another episode of My American Dream. That's a wrap for this week. If you have a story idea, send it off to PositivelyKansas at kpts.org. We love hearing from you. I'm Sierra Scott. It was great to have you with us. We hope to see you back again next time. So long. Program support provided by the F. Price Cosman Memorial Trust and Trust Bank Trustee, bringing you the Kansas Wild Edge segments on Positively Kansas. Brought to you by Central Security Group, your experts in home automation, security, and peace of mind. View video on your smartphone and control your home's lights, locks, heating, cooling, and more. Security app compatible with Apple Watch and Amazon Echo. The preceding program was brought to you by TZ Productions, supporting KPTS and the communities it serves in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. This week's My American Dream segment is brought to you in part by Communities and Schools of Mid-America, doing whatever it takes to help students stay in school and be successful. Support also comes from viewers like you. Thank you. Call KPTS to receive a DVD copy of this program for a $40 donation. You can also send a check or money order along with the program name, date, and time to the address on your screen. And you will receive a one-year KPTS membership.